Hey, how you doing, guys? You know me, of course, I'm John Doe. And I really hope that I know you, too. Okay, so, of course, you know, we're um, drinking with a Marxist. So let's get this start out right today. I already cracked it open, sorry. We're doing a lot of things today, personal and professional, so. I'm kind of taking, taking a bit load off at the moment. But I'm drinking this, um, Chuhai. You guys may have seen me, um, drink this before. Like I said before, it's, um, sort of like sake, but not really. It's brewed different, distilled different. Usually flavor, flavored with lemon or lime, so. A toast to the comrades, of course. Alright, so. I tend to be one of these people who always has, like, at least one thing in the back of my head kind of brewing, thinking about it. And as I was going through my day today, which still ain't finished, I kept coming back to democratic centralism. And how this idea, you know, is at times scoffed and rejected by certain red leftist groups and red leftist people. And I find that to be in, in extremely intriguing. You know, and a lot of times it's people who, you know, really have a big issue with Leninism, especially with Leninism, and the formation and history of the USSR in general. But I won't get into that. I thought it was more interesting to really take a look at, um, not in great detail, but enough, of democratic centralism. And just how fundamentally important that really is. Now, what is it? A lot of us hear this word. In essence, what it is, is when you have complete and open discussion about all ideas to formulate a plan or a resolve for any given issue or need or thing you want to get done and you vote democratically on it now once that decision is made we go into unity and solidarity of action and thought we don't discuss that anymore it's a very planned and very effective way to go about democracy but it entails a bit more than that Ugh, I want to stand up it also entails the absence of political identity, which is very key and important to having true workers' democracy. When we have democratic centralism, there's no longer like conservative or liberal, or green or whatever. There's the workers. Now, preferably we like to have a workers' party, and we would want monopoly of power. That's usually the best conditions for democratic centralism to be effective. When we have that, it makes this idea very powerful, extremely effective. We can do things a lot better. But when I think about it, the thing that really, you know, I've talked to people, you know, beyond the internet, trust me. I'm one of these guys, I'm out here, you know. Not just the internet, okay? I'm not one of those Marxists. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke, a joke, joke. Sorry. Couldn't help myself. But when I have discussions and get into it with um, other, other radical red leftists, the thing that they, sometimes they don't like, is that final decision. You know, where we say, okay, we had a vote, we discussed it in detail, we made a damn decision, no more talking about it. And if you do keep bringing it up and want to be contentious, you're breaking the unity. And you're breaking the solidarity. And you're engaging in identity politics at that point. You'll see people have a big issue with that. They'll go, but, 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 minority opinion. I can, Democrat centrism already handles that. When the time it was time to discuss things and go over things and give your opinion on what should be done, that was a time for you to speak. Completely and fully. And everyone else had a responsibility to listen to you completely and fully and add your ideas to the general understanding of the consensus that will come to under democratic centralism. So no, you can't just say, I still want to speak after we made a damn decision for using democratic centralism. 
it becomes very frustrating dealing with these type of people, right? They just don't get it. You know, when they talk about, well, it's authoritarian. How can it be authoritarian? Everyone who is involved in decision making is given every opportunity to raise their voice and make their points. So again, after we have that vote and we go into unity and solidarity of action, and you keep on making a little niche, you're engaging in identity politics there. And you're creating an opposition to the will of the workers. So I did want to speak about this a little bit. And I could go into a lot more great depth in depth about it, but I think I leave that to the comment section. We can discuss that more. But I did want to touch on it and point out these things. You know, because I've been accused of being undemocratic because I, I'm a full believer in democratic centralism, and that just angers me. More offends me than it does anger me. I'm the last person you want to call undemocratic. I'm more democratic than the most democratic person you can imagine. But it's because I believe in uh, demo democratic centralism, people take issue with me. So I hope I've explained a few points here. I hope people can understand a bit more. Now, on the YouTube description box of this video, on the YouTube page for this video, I'll put some links so you can read more about democratic centralism for yourself, for some of the more some of the intellectuals who developed this and would talk about it. You get a fundamental base of what I'm talking about if you have not. If you're watching this video elsewhere, hey, please go over to this second channel here, Drinking from Marx, to subscribe, and you get all time of video kind of videos like this. This is my second channel. Remember that. So I'm keeping it, trying to keep it as loose as I can. So until next time, is it me, John Doe? And you've been drinking with a Marxist.